What's up guys, if you haven't got entered for the giveaway, what are you doing? Come out to the website, customoffsets.com forward slash giveaway. The easiest way to get entered is pick up one of these t-shirts. This is the front, this is the back. You can win any size, any finish, motor metal wheels. We'll wrap it in Gladiator tires and get it shipped out to you. Bye. There we go. Yeah, we're golden there now. We go. ah, this hurts my hand. Yeah, oh yeah, this is terrible. There we go. Wow, the, easy, the hard part's over. Now we just gotta do it three more times. What's going on guys, I'm Fuller from Custom Offsets, Custom Offsets TV on the YouTube. Today we've got seven tires in front of me and these are arguably some of the best mud terrain tires on the market, but they're all best for kind of their own reasons. So we're gonna go through the lineup, show you some pros and cons of each one and explain a little bit about these tires so you can make kind of an educated decision when you're shopping for tires. So if you've got a lifted truck or you're in the lifted truck game, you know that tires are an expensive part of owning that truck. So we wanna make sure that you're making the best decision when you're putting rubber on your wheels. Now obviously we do packages too, so if you need wheels, tires, suspension, the whole nine yards, we got that all for you on the website. But diving into this, I think we're gonna start on this end. Some of the more popular names that you've probably already heard of for comparison wise, as far as pricing goes and load index, load range, all that. I went ahead and found the data for a 33 by 12 and a half. R20. So when we say 33, we're talking 33 inches tall. 12 and a half is gonna be how wide that tire is. R20 meaning it's 4, 8, 20 inch wheel. The very first one here, this is the Toyo Open Country MT. So for the Toyos, you're looking at a load range E. It's 114 load index, so plenty uh, heavy duty as far as towing goes, if you've got a three quarter ton truck or anything like that. This is a 10 ply rated tire. These are actually some of the heaviest tires coming in at 71 pounds each. And they're also on the higher side of the price scale, uh, right around $2,100. As far as the design goes, you've got these really wide shoulder lugs here that kind of taper back towards the center. It does follow your traditional four block pattern, but they're really angled in the center to give you this extra grip. They've got these big scoops on the tires to give you uh, that extra traction. As far as sidewall goes too, relatively aggressive sidewall. The design isn't super crazy, but it sticks out a decent amount that it gives you that nice appearance uh, when it's mounted up on a wheel. They also do have the stone ejectors on the outside as well, so you're getting nice features like that, so you're not getting these things caked full of mud. Uh, and that's another good point to bring up. These seem to self-clean really well, so once you get up to speed a little bit more, stuff just flings out of here and you're not gonna have to worry about uh, turning these nice mud tires into racing slicks. So moving down from the Toyo, we then have the Nitto Trail Grappler MT. This is the comparable tire here. Again, Nitto is one of those brands that's been around forever. My favorite thing with the Trail Grappler is just how square this thing looks. As far as an aesthetics point of view, uh, it's very squared off. You do have some kind of scoops on the side here with an alternating design on these shoulder lugs. Again, following your traditional four block pattern, but they put these large cuts in the uh, outside lugs to kind of give it a more aggressive look as well. Same thing here with the stone ejectors. So that should cover it as far as looks go on the tread pattern itself. 114 load index, it's a load range E, it's a 10 ply tire, weighs in at about 66 pounds per tire and it's gonna be under $2,000 right around the $1,900 range for the 33 12 and R20. Another unique thing for the Trail Grappler MT is that it actually has two different sidewalls. So they call it a less aggressive and more aggressive. They're pretty hard to differentiate which one is more or less aggressive, but on one side, You've got these smaller uh, side lugs, not necessarily giving you any kind of grip, more so just style. And on the opposite side, it's more of a, it reminds me of like a Baja style tire where it's very straight cut down. They stick out a little bit further. So I guess that's what I would call the more aggressive side. By default, we give you the more aggressive side. If you want for some reason less aggressive side, we can do that too. But by default, we give you the more aggressive one. Because people always ask, are they actually 12 and a half inches wide? Uh, on the Nittos and Toyos, you're gonna see that, yeah, you're coming out right about 12, yeah, 12 and a half on the Toyo. Uh, the Nitto, 12 and a half there as well. Moving down onto the Mickey Thompson Baja MTZ P3. That's a mouthful. This one, it does still have the four block tread design but the center sections are so close together, it really looks like you've got these three big giant lugs coming at you. Now, they don't actually offer a 33 12 and R20. The closest comparable size to that is gonna be the 305 55 20. Uh, reason being, they offer this all the way down to like 15 inch wheel sizes. So if you're a hardcore off-road guy, uh, they've got options there for you in like a 33, but they also go all the way up to 40s in these. Stone ejectors on here as well. Love the sidewall design, kind of this scooped out block pattern. And even up onto the outside shoulder lugs, you've still got cutouts in the side of those as well that alternate between the cutouts and then the big scoops on the side. So plenty of grip, 
uh, deep mud, deep snow kind of situation. This is going to get you going fine. They also do have a little bit of siping in the top, which is going to help for that winter traction, uh, where these two don't have quite as much of that. As far as the numbers go and the data on this one, in the 30555, it's 121 load index, which is actually more heavy duty than some of the other guys. 10 ply, 68 pounds. Manufacturer's warranty, so none of these actually have a mileage warranty. You typically don't get a mileage warranty with a mud terrain tire, but you still have a manufacturer's warranty that covers uneven wear and manufacturer's defects, things like that. Moving down to the BFG Mud Terrain KM3. This is another one of those really aggressive looking tires. They make this all the way down into the UTV sizes as well as your big giant lifted truck applications too. So I guarantee you they have something to fit. As far as the numbers go, it's a 114 load index. It's a load range E, it's very similar to all the other ones that we've seen. Uh, the tread depth on here is a little shallower than some of the other ones. This is gonna be 18, 30 seconds. Price point, you're looking under $2,000 for the 33s, right around 1920, 1950. You have very, very square cutouts and the shoulder lugs actually extend down down onto the sidewall and then they have this kind of angled cut forward uh, that I think looks really sharp on there and then it's a BFG so it's just got classic BFG styling. Now sometimes we've said that BFGs are your dad's tire but that's the all-terrain TAKO2 not the KM3. This thing's a beast off-road. Moving down into some of our uh, lower price point options a Turo Trailblade MT. So we ran a Turo's on I don't know 40 different builds that we did here. We had them on CO2. They're used a ton and they're also a lot more affordable. So like a 33, 12 and a half, 20 here, it's only like 1350 or so. And you still get load index of 114, load range E. They're a little bit lighter weight actually, about 63 pounds. Again, they have a manufacturer's warranty, not a mileage warranty. The biggest complaints that we hear from people is that they run a little narrow uh, and we're not here to hide anything from you. We'll measure it. It's about 11 and three quarters, maybe 12. So is it a little narrower? Sure, but it's not really a huge deal there. If you're trying to actually fit a larger setup than probably what you should on your truck, it's not necessarily a bad idea to go with an Turo because you do shave off just a little bit. So if you're worried about trimming or cutting, you can actually get away with this tire uh, in a larger size than some of the other ones. Sidewall on here, a Turo got it right. This thing is aggressive, angled, Still has your four block tread uh, pattern on here, stone ejectors. There's not any of these that I would describe as quiet. There's some that are quieter than the others. Probably the trail grab is pretty decent. And uh, the Cooper, however, is uh, like the opposite of the spectrum where that's gonna be just as loud, even though it's a big name brand tire. Um, it's just as loud as, as some of these other ones too. This one falls into the best category because it's the best price. And if you're shopping based on price alone, this is gonna be a good option for you. So this is the Vercelli or maybe Vercelli if you're from Italy, I don't know how to say it. In a 33, 12 and a half, it's under 1200 bucks, like 11, 1130, 1150, somewhere around there. 119 load index, so still plenty capable for your heavy duty trucks, your towing applications. Load range F, so it's actually higher load range than some of the other ones. Weighs in at 62 pounds, does have a little bit uh, less as far as tread depth goes at 15, 30 seconds. So that's where they're shaving some of that uh, weight off of there is just with a little less rubber on here. You still have stone ejectors, you still have siping, you still have the traditional four block tread design. The center tread as well as the outside uh, shoulder blocks are actually stepped tread. So as these things wear, you end up with more surface contact that should hopefully help with noise as it goes down. Sidewall on here is nothing super special to talk about pretty standard stuff there. Um, they do have a million of these little rubber things. When it, I don't know why they have so many, but it's, it's ridiculous. Look at this. You see this? Why are there so many? As far as width goes, that's what everybody's gonna wanna know. Are they true to size? Kind of same story as the Turo here. We're looking, call it 11 and three quarters there on the 12 and a half inch wide tire. Moving down to the last one here. This is the Cooper Discoverer STT Pro. Why there's two ERs in there, I don't know, but that's how they did it. Uh, in a 33, 12 and a half, 121 load index, so very heavy duty tire, load range E. Weighs in at 68 pounds, so not too bad there. So they have the stone ejectors that go a lot deeper than some of the other ones. So as far as self-cleaning goes, uh, it's excellent there. They alternate between a four block and then a, well, what do we wanna call this? Three. It's kind of one, two, three, four, five, but these outside ones are connected. So a little different pattern than you're seeing on some of the other ones. They do also have these scoops cut in to the outside shoulder lugs to give you a little extra traction off-road there. The name of the game with off-road traction is surface area. How, how much rubber can you get in contact with whatever you're driving in? 
and the more you have, obviously, the more momentum you're going to have to push you forward, the more grip you're going to have to push you forward. So they've got the little tiny ones that are scooped out vertically, they've got big giant horizontal ones, uh, lots of surface area on this tire, so you don't have to worry about getting stuck there. Keep in mind, again, this is a mud terrain tire, it's designed for an off-road application, but a lot of us are running these on the lifted trucks because it just looks like that's where it belongs. Sidewalls on here, pretty aggressive styling, not sticking out super far, but still have a lot of different cutouts and indents and whatnot to give this uh, an aggressive looking sidewall. So even though this thing is like under 1200 bucks, the question is what, what is on the inside? Well, we're gonna have Banker slice this thing open and compare the Vercelli to the Nitto. And we'll see what's inside. Banker, get your favorite tool. We gotta cut these open. You ever done that before? No, you're doing it. Yeah, it's not fun. <laughs> well, I didn't say it was gonna be fun. We're gonna cut this Vercelli open and compare it to the inside. Cut it this way so I can see a cross section. Yeah. And then cut the nitto. This part of the tire. I understand. Is steel. I understand it's steel. Surrounded by rubber. We're gonna see hey. how much steel is in there. So was my frame. <laughs> but you cut right through that mother or so and I watched it happen. Yeah, because it didn't do this when you try cutting it. Right, I'll hold it. All like right. I did my frame. Mm. <laughs> hey, you remember? You better put some gloves ah. on. Oh. Bring it back here. Yeah, where's the guy that was gonna hold it? Can you can you see the vibrations in my hands? Are made really well. Yeah. <laughs> this is hard. Junior, call your mom. She'd like this. No, it'll flex too much. He's gotta get close to the bottom, then we'll flip it over. Oh. <coughs> oh, this one had a hole in it already. We split it. Oh. Time you go in the middle and go out. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> look, look at that. that. Don't you just look at it? It's a display piece. Oh, yeah. Whoa. come on, Junior. Why'd you let go? Tires now, like it used to be a 10 ply was 10 ply. Now they're just 10 ply rated. It's just the amount of rubber that equals what 10 plies was. Yes. They don't actually do that anymore. Maybe I should have said that to begin with. Let's cut this one. That first part was fucking out. I, I told the guy Most that we were cutting tires, and he said, why? And I was like, for a scientific experiment. Well, it sounds he's bad. Like, he's... he's like, where do you work? Slow and steady wins the race. Jeez. What are you doing? Jeez. Yeah, man, handle that. Oh, I almost lost the pinky. It took the carbide teeth right off of it from cutting through those. Yeah. Just a fucking solid, like, steel beam. It's got more steel in it. That's the way it is. I feel like I it want more feels, steel. Does it have more steel? It feels steel? like it has more steel. So looking at these two now cut open and side by side, we've got the Nitto on my left and the Vercellia on my right. You can see that they're relatively similar as far as construction goes, like starting with the steel cable in the bead area. They're pretty similar in diameter and quantity as far as that goes. And the construction is kind of the same with the layering here. Steel amount looks to be similar, probably a little bit less in the Vercelli, but the biggest difference is the thickness of the rubber in the Nitto. So you have a lot more underneath the steel belting in the tread area as well as above, a lot more above as compared to the Vercelli here where you only have, you know, two millimeters maybe above or so and just uh, a couple layers below. So similar in construction, that's where the weight difference is gonna come from when you have less steel, less rubber. Obviously overall, you have less material, less weight, but similar construction, it's just the quantity, the thickness, and the quality of the rubber materials that are used that kind of make the difference in the price. So, you know, you got your more high-end tire on the left-hand side and your budget-friendly tire on the right. So that about wraps it up then. If you guys have any questions on these tires, you can find all the information on them on our website, customoffsets.com. Otherwise, make sure you like, share, subscribe on YouTube. Peace. You're not cutting that one open. You're cutting this one open. You leave that tire alone. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is the one we're missing from this kit. So let me go look.